In this video series, will join me on my journey as I'm starting out in CNC. That's coming up next. And welcome back. Funny thing about journeys, they can take a long, long time. And this CNC journey of mine started almost a year ago when I took delivery of my Oosnest Workbee CNC. I published three videos about the process before I, I simply ran out of time and space and quite literally had to put the whole project to one side. Fast forward 10 months or so though, and the CNC is now up and running. Uh, the video is, uh, series is complete, but I thought it made sense to repost those first three videos with a little bit of re-editing, starting with today's video, part one. I'll be popping back into the video now and then just to keep the information current. And part two will be out tomorrow and part three the day after. Uh, the all-new part four will be out next week at the usual time and subsequent episodes thereafter. But for now, let's go back in time to the very start of starting out in CNC. Now, if you watch a lot of maker YouTube channels, especially our American cousins, then you won't help but have noticed that the vast majority of them seem to have acquired a CNC machine in the last couple of years. Uh, in fact, probably not just a CNC machine, but a plasma and a laser as well. Uh, CNC machines, of course, computer numerical control, a sort of computer-guided router working in three dimensions that can cut intricate shapes repeatedly. They look like really interesting little bits and pieces, uh, and I've got a couple of projects uh, that they would be absolutely perfect for. But when you start looking into these things, the vast majority of CNC machines are either American, certainly the higher-end hobby ones are, are only available in the US or direct from China. And of course, if I'm putting down a decent chunk of change for these things, I'd quite like to have a little bit of advice beforehand, uh, preferably from somebody who's a little closer to home than a few thousand miles away. Uh, I don't know anything about CNC machines, but luckily for me, I know a few people who do. So I loaded up my car with my YouTube paraphernalia and headed out to Essex to have a chat with my friends at Ooze Nest. Uh, so Ryan, uh, nice to see you again. Thanks yeah, for uh, thanks for having me around. Uh, if if somebody comes to you much like me, for example, and says, "Oh, I quite like CNC, but I don't really know anything about them," what, what, yeah, you know, what, what, where do I start? Yeah, are, are you just going to sell them the most expensive thing you make, or no? Of course you're not, because nah. you, you want them to come back to you for yeah. all the other bits and pieces. Yeah. So I mean, where where do you start as as the yeah the, the sales pitch? Do you start with size or yeah? You usually, want to find out sort of. Yeah, what they're planning to machine. Yeah. So materials and size. Right. So that basically dictates what size machine you want okay. to get and what drive you want to get. Uh, that didn't take long, did it? I'm interrupting here because me and Ryan had a bit of a discussion about belt drive versus screw drive, which is all a bit moot now because all the machines that Oosnest supply are screw drive only, even the biggest 1500 by 1500 machine. Carry on. Uh, we say on the screw drive you can get 0.1 mil accuracy, okay. and on a belt drive you can get 0.2 mil accuracy. But for sign work, <laughs> that'll do, you know, yeah. <laughs> a fifth or a tenth of a millimetre. Okay. But when you're cutting like aluminium plates like this, then mm. that's where you really yeah. want a small screwdriver because they need to be precise. Yeah. Uh, so okay, uh, I'm I'm only ever going to be cutting MDF. Yeah. And plywood, maybe a little bit of, I don't know, polycarbonate board or acrylic or something. Yeah. Thin, you know, three mil or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and let's say I'd like to do. Uh, what's what's the Okay, so you do a half a sheet, so it'll do 12 mil, 1200 mil wide. Yeah, 1200. Is that the cutting area? Uh, yeah, so it can do slightly over that. It's about right. 1250 by 1250. Okay. That's the biggest machine we do. And then this is our smallest machine. Right. And this can do about 550 by 500. Okay. Again, just to clarify, that was the smallest machine that Oosnest did at the time, and that's the one that I have here, the 750 by 750 But they now do a 500 by 500 machine as well, perhaps better suited to smaller workspaces and at a lower price point too. So this is, this is a 550 uh, cut, more or less? More or less, yeah, yeah. 550 and about 500 deep. Um, all the specs on our website. Yeah, sure, of course, bottom. yeah, yeah. Um, so you have this back area here which the machine can't get to, it's because yeah. of the plates. But then you can actually, I've seen one of Ryan's, the other Ryan's yeah. videos about it, you can actually move the yeah. move the, the workpiece through if you need to do something longer. Yeah. So, so if you had a, you know, if you've got a five, whatever this is, 550 width of cut, yeah. you could actually cut almost unlimited, Pretty unlimited much. length, yeah. provided you can register it as you, as you move it yeah. through every 500 mil or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so we've done the video on doing that. Yeah. So if you've got the biggest one, that can do a four foot by four foot, then you've got to push it through once, and you've got eight foot by eight by yeah, four sure. foot sheet. Um, you just need to support it front or back, whichever way yeah. you're pushing through. 
um, and just got to clamp it down, have a register point, and it pretty much cuts accurately when you're pushing through. That's fine as well. Fantastic. Um, yeah. The the cutting bit is a router or a spindle or yeah. So so it's it's flexible in that you can put whatever you want. Yeah. On it, so you? we supply it with outer mount or a router if you're yeah. trying to add your own spindle. So you have your 80 mil wide extrusion here. Yeah with four slots of 20mm spacing, so you can just mount anything you want onto it. Okay. And then we do like an option with the mount and rat mount, uh, router mount only. Yep. So with that, you can add your own router, spindle, yep. and then we supply the Makita Dewalt as another addition. And then we also supply a mill kit. So these are a good range of end mills, which okay. you can use. And these are end, end mills are just like fancy router cutters, basically. Yeah, so that's... Yeah. Forgive my ignorance, yeah, yeah, I'm just talking yeah. to, a, like talking to a child, basically. Um, so, so that, yeah, they're, just, they're, they're cutters. Yes. Wow, really fine ones too. Yeah, so these are quarter inch or eighth inch shank. And with this kit we do goes down to right. the 16th inches. Right. Um, we recommend the maximum end mill size you use on this is eight mil. Okay. So we don't recommend going up to the half inch size collets. No, no, sure. That the key is the, the the dead ringer for the, or rather the katsu is the, the, the dead ringer for that yeah. reason. I've actually got a katsu, I really like them. I might try using that for this. Yeah. See how it goes. Because it's exactly the same diameter. Yeah. And that comes with, or you, we can get a, a an adapter ring yeah. or whatever you so call it. So if you it. just send us an email and then say you want the shim, we'll supply it free of charge and that goes exactly. inside our mount and then that just fit nicely around there. Yeah. So this mount, it's the Makita, the Dewalt and the Bosch. Um, GK600 I think yeah, it's called, one, yeah. so it yeah. fits them three by standard and then you can adapt it to fit any other oh, yeah. router or oh, no, That's a quarter inch collet and obviously you need to step it down to a whatever yeah. it was sick. Uh, and of course you have a dust, fairly <laughs> serious looking dust collection yeah. Uh, skirt. Yeah, so this is uh, another option we do, um, the dust extractor, so just a dust shoe we supply. Yeah. Um, it's a good project actually to make on your machine yeah, when you sure. get it, but if you want to start off straight away with one, yeah. then we supply one so this disconnects magnetically. Oh, right. So you oh. can easily change your bit without having to disconnect uh, your shoe. Yeah. You just put it back on. Um, the dust shoe, the, the brush is especially made for CNC applications because if you use really hard dust shoes, when it's going over your bit, it can end up moving the router around. Yeah, it's too much drag on it. Yeah, all, yeah. so these yeah. are nice soft ones. Yeah, it's, not, um, it's not the sort of thing you have at the bottom of your garage door. Nah, let's be honest. Nah. You've got a, is that a controller board yeah. there as well? So this this is a new thing, isn't it? You, you were mentioning to me earlier. Yeah, so um, in December we switched our board to what's called the Duet controller. Right. This is mainly a 3D printing board up until now. I was going to say, I've heard of that from, from the 3D, 3D printing side of things. Mm, so we're pretty much one of the first people to put it on the CNC machine. So what this gives us is that super smooth motion control. Um, you've got control over the currents, the steps per millimeter, all through the software. It's also infinite or Wi-Fi based, so you can connect to it mm. over your Wi-Fi network. Um, the files that you're sending to your machine are all stored on the controller. So you just need to set your machine up, put the file on the controller, press send, and then you can disconnect and it'll carry on doing its thing. And you're saying it connects through a, a web browser, and, and yeah. Ryan was showing me before, he had it actually on his phone. Yeah. So you can actually control it from your phone. Yeah. And, and of course, because the files are stored on the controller board, if you're doing something regularly, you can keep them yeah. on there, and you effectively just press yeah. play, and just, it, it, yeah. Yeah, make sure you've got something underwritten. Pretty much, yeah. It goes. So files and the control software is all stored on the boards. It doesn't matter which device you're connected to your machine with, you get all your files access to them. You can set your work positions all like the old controller. So say you're just cutting the same thing over and over again, yeah. it will be set up the same each time. What about the software side? I see you've got a Vectric. Yeah, so um, we recommend using the, the software by Vectric. Um, so they specialise in making CAM software. It also has a lot of CAD functionality built in. So they do um, free versions, Cut 2D, VCarve, Aspire. Right. Cut 2D is pretty much just 2D work on 2D planes, sort of like this inset you see here yes. and profiles and stuff like that. Their VCarve, is the same as Cut2D, but also does engraving work and can cut one 3D model. And then the Aspire one can do all what VCAR can do, but it's got modeling functionalities and you can cut more than one model. Um, okay. But then you I can just, also just use- want to cut bits of MDF, effort, really. Yeah, <laughs> really. Like, bits of plywood. Yeah. <laughs> but you can also use other scam software with the machine, as long as you can export your G-code from it, such right. as Fusion 360 is a popular one that people yeah. use with well machine, uh, Sketch you can, or there's loads out there yeah. now. 
which you can use. My, but my head's getting ready to explode. Yeah. So, but, but basically, you need to export the file at, in a particular type so that yeah. the machine can read it, so the yeah. controller board yeah. can read yeah. it. And uh, can you do that over Wi-Fi to the to the board? Yeah. yeah so, so you so. just Wi-Fi it, connect to the board in your browser, upload it to the board over Wi-Fi, and then you just press send, and it just run it. Um, yeah, as long as your file's set up correctly. It's a whole new world, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, great. Well, uh, thank you very much for, for showing me and explaining the basics yeah. to me. Uh, people can find Ooze Nest, of course, at Ooze Nest KUK uh, yeah. website. You're, uh, you're going to have a big stand at Maker Central as well. Yeah, it's going to be at Maker Central. I think we're, we're a couple of stands behind you in the same sort of block. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there as well. Yeah, so we're right opposite the main stage next yeah. to Vectric. So you oh, can yeah, ask right, both of, of us. For both sides of the thing, the mechanical side and the software side, you can ask them. Right. Um, you're there, there's a lot of people there. We have yeah. a machine running inside an enclosure, um, yeah. and you have a demo machine. We're also releasing an enclosure soon for the machine, so oh, if you've okay. got a like, like a workshop, you don't yeah. dust everywhere, yeah. all the noise as well, the noise. that I contain that. So that be I mean, it is a router running, and you will have the extractor running, so there is a certain amount of yeah, noise, it's always noise attached annoying. to it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, what do you expect? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you very much for, for explaining that to me. Um, I've got a few decisions to make, really, now, haven't I? Yeah. And uh, we'll see what uh, see what we can come up with. Uh, fantastic. Ryan yeah. from Ooze Nest, thank you very much indeed. Today. Yeah. So a little while after my very fruitful discussion afternoon spent with the guys at Ooze Nest, a couple of large boxes arrived for me, quite weighty, quite heavy, full of interesting little bits and pieces. So this is the Ooze Nest Workbee. 750 by 750 mil uh, CNC machine. I've got the full kit here. Uh, comes in two packets. Uh, packages one with the, all the extrusion and bits in, and the screw drives in my particular case, and then the other one that has all the other bits and pieces in. I'm just going to quickly unbox these now, make sure that everything's there, just do a quick run through uh, on a checklist, uh, and then we'll get into what each of these little bits and pieces does. Uh, thanks for watching. That's the end of part one. Part two will be out tomorrow. And don't forget to subscribe for more weekly workshop videos. I'll see you next time.